Welcome to the show, Yasser. It's always great to connect with you and catch up with you again. The minute you confirmed the invite, I was extremely happy that we're going to have this discussion, especially from supply chain lens. So welcome to the show. My pleasure, Mahmoud. And thank you very much for having me in this podcast. It's a new experience. I'm very, very delighted to be with you as well. Great. Now, the way that uh, you know the person uh, or introducing uh, a person to someone, the best way to introduce this person is through their purpose in life, because this is where it linked with everything they do on a daily basis. So what is your purpose in life? The purpose in life that I have defined a few years ago that I would be delighted to uh, share my experience and to inspire young generation going to the business in in their uh, uh, new career life. Okay. I have to admit, I am one of the people that you inspired me. It doesn't mean that you're that old. (laughs) I'm not not that old. (laughs) Exactly. Um, And the good news that in this episode, the true essence of this uh, uh, episode, that how we can deliver a key message for the supply chain community, especially from a finance lens in that sense. And uh, I think uh, I've seen it on a daily basis, Yasser, that you are inspiring everyone around you, especially when it comes to talent and uh, and people, impacting people in their life and through their professional career and personal as well. I've seen this personally with you all, all in your life. Now, if you said that your purpose is to inspire young generation and um, build talents. But during life, you get hits up right, left and center. Pressure, you get some heated discussion. But I've never seen you deviating from your purpose. Uh, so how you give, how you, how you sustain your purpose flowering every day? How you don't get affected by the, the noise around uh, your purpose? You need to be focused. You need to believe in the style that you are embedding your, uh, your management style. Hmm. If that focus already there and you're believing in it and you see it actually even delivering, you shouldn't go on left, right and center. Just continue driving whatever you're driving with the same management style that you have. That could be the management style is not applicable to I- everyone. But once I'm seeing that management style keep delivering, I'm continuing actually doing the same thing and it was delivering as well. Okay. So no matter whether the noise you have, the outcome of the result keep you in the right direction. Uh, that's what, that's for what sure, you're yeah. saying. Yeah. So speaking about the management, now there is a, in terms of management style, and you used to have a big team, mashallah, as well. There is there is two approach of management in that direction. One is somehow pay full attention to the culture, emotional intelligence, and take care of the people. But sometimes this style get deviate from the performance management, delivering the results. And the other management style as well, that you only focus on the numbers, the delivery. This is what all you keen of, as long as the business is delivering. But this management style somehow cold. It doesn't inspire people to deliver more and feel fulfillment on a daily basis. How do you keep the balance between both? You are tackling a very critical uh, actually aspect. Results are very important, but you deliver results through people and team. So you cannot focus only on the team and forget results, and you cannot go do vice versa. If you only focus the results, you'll be losing the team, in my view. And this is exactly the experience that actually I managed how to manage supply chain in, in my career. Now, how to balance to deliver good results and to keep the team inspired at the same time and engaged in the delivering the results, there is several methodology that you can uh, you, ca- you can actually follow. First of all, you are managing a team, not a machine, and with humans you need to get their hearts and minds. First of all, let them be with you. So you need to communicate the vision very mm. clearly to the whole team. Mm. Once this team see the vision and how it is aligned with organization objectives, at least you will be aligning everyone to the same direction. Mm. If they understand the vision, how it's really helping to deliver certain goals and obje- objectives within the total organization or the supply chain, everybody in the same boat. That's actually the first step. Mm. Once they identify the vision and you shared it co- uh, and you communicate it completely clear, then you need to start involving the team in this vision by the communication and have actually after communicating the vision, you need to have an open dialogue and discussion. Let them contribute, listen to them. Maybe there's some fine tuning they need actually to add. Mm. 
that's okay that's fine by having and an, all this kind of discussion open discussion i start hearing from them by automatically by default they start getting the buy-in of the vision and how they are contributing even to the discussion as well and that will be helping the buy-in to the vision and to the objectives that you, you need to, to embed which actually they, these are the first steps once you identify the vision and involve the, to- the, the whole team and I have actually utilized the same methodology and it was working as well you start involving the team not, not, do, not do it by the top management or the executive committee hmm. involve the team to start grabbing the milestones to deliver the vision and the objectives of the supply chain strategy or the, even the total organization actually that supply chain will come under the total organization strategy and, and, and vision if they start contributing to, to define the big milestones and sub milestones, that's actually, they, 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 they bought the vision already. Mm. And they started embedding this into whatever they're doing and they start drafting the, 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 the steps by themselves. If that's already accomplished, then definitely the next step that you need to do to set any clear uh, expected. Uh, 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 we need to st- set clear expectations hmm. out of all milestones. You need to start actually drafting the KPIs to deliver, th- to deliver those milestones. Hmm. And with that actually done with the team them, uh, themselves. Hmm. That would be encouraging the team to actually deliver because they have embedded the vision, they have buying in the vision, they have cre- contributed to the uh, uh, expectation and the milestones actually draft, then they start to deliver those milestones. The next one, you actually need to lead by example. If this was the leader or the executive committee delivering and driving all the function with this kind of uh, 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 culture that you're trying to do, actually the whole team will be complying automatically. Mm. Because if you start delivering the results, as well as the the culture that you need to create to deliver this vision, for sure you will be creating unprecedented team to deliver this kind of results. This will come automatically. And with the, the experience, it's really happening. I got inspired personally. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that I am into this vision. <laughs> there is something which through my experience as well, usually in supply chain, we don't celebrate success. Mm. And f- for us as engineers, if you deliver good results, that's a very good celebration to yourself. But actually, this is not completely true. And I was missing this actually in, 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 in during my career. You need to celebrate success and you need to recognize team members who deliver actually the milestones of the culture as well as delivering the positive results. I think if you just manage all this kind of t- together, you will be managing the good results or the excellent results to deliver as well as creating a very inspiring and uh, a team to deliver all this kind of results. With, with, with this answer, I think you answered the following three more questions with because that's a comprehensive answer end to end. The way that you articulated that a vision cannot be cascaded top down and this is what you have to deliver. But you just start the spark of the vision and then you leave the team to contribute so they own it as well. Exactly. In the future. And they see the leadership lead by example, whatever the outcome of that vision cascade. So we don't just cascade for a, a certain team and then we go outside the meeting and then the leadership act differently against this vision. It's very important, exactly. Because mm-hmm. they need to actually the whole executive team delivering exactly the same. Okay. So automatically this will come reflected to the team members and everybody will be aligned automatically to the same vision and to contribution because they have understand the vision, they contributed even to uh, 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 to fine tune and they start delivering even the, the, the milestones and the sub milestones to deliver all these kind of results. Okay. So it's already there. Okay. So leading by exam, separating success after that, I think you'll be having a good formula to have a very good results as well. Okay. So now uh, moving out of this question, um, seeing you in the past few years, uh, I've seen, mashallah, very good talents around you, exporting talents, developing talents, watching talents, sponsor talents, uh, even beyond your core scope, uh, even beyond your supply chain uh, area as well. So I think this is linked directly with your purpose about driving talents, but especially these days with the current unpresidential situation in the global economy everywhere, retaining top talents is not an easy job uh, in that sense. 
I'm not saying that you managed to retain all your talents, but what was your strategy to retain your top talents? That That's normal, yes, yeah, sir. We have the list of talents. You rank them. This is fact of life. No one is perfect across all the world, and no one has a perfect team ever across all the world. But your top talents, how do you retain them? What well, we are human, and people doesn't like to be uh, suffocated. If you done all, the, actually, whatever I just shared with you, that means you are completely understanding and you are have a full confidence in your team and your executive committee that they will traveling the, the there's as as expected. Give them a space. Let them drive it in their own way. Because I found it, it's really working as well. If you're trying to limit them with your own style only, they can do, but they will be completely limited. You give the top target and let them do it in their own style. You will you will see magic, hmm. and you will see something that even you you couldn't expect it. But once the team you start actually trying to suffocate them with your own style or whatever, you need to dictate what exactly what they need to do. Some of the some of the team members they would like to have this kind of space. They would like to have this kind of freedom. And in the same time. Definitely, you need to understand the team members. Who could actually have, and you can give that free space to them, and who need to be a little bit watch or coach most of the time. Hmm. By differentiating the team members and try to manage them differently, and everybody with own style, I think you'll be seeing magic from the team. Okay. But that sounds uh, like a perfect scenario, because as a supply chain leader, Sometimes you get a mandate. There is no democracy. We have to do this one, two, three, four tonight. <laughs> you know what I mean? So even delivering this message, you used to deliver it differently. So giving the team space, I fully agree with you. But I think in some of the busy days, you used to give a mandate. Uh, there is no democracy here. You have to follow this direction. How do you manage such a situation with the team that used to get a free space from you to operate? The best thing to do, actually, usually, I need to keep the whole team engaged. Mm. So there is no uh, 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 distance between them what's, hap- what's happening in the business. Keep updating them with the challenges in the organization, as well as what's ha- whatever hap- happening in the total operation of the company. They wouldn't say that we are going to, f- for example, sometimes in a tough situation or a challenging situation, which means they could expect something will come and pop up at any time. So mentally, I'm preparing them just to be ready for this kind of <laughs> requirement without, without saying it. But actually, once it's coming, I start demanding and requesting. Mentally, they are ready. Mm. And that's why you can see them actually completely start delivering as well. OK, OK. With, without actually even proper planning sometime. I agree. So uh, exactly. I, I know. Exactly. So we we go out of a situation, and then out of twenty four seven, twenty four hours, we 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 find the situation. Well, the team is ready. <laughs> they are always ready. <laughs> okay. So the last question I have in this section, I believe you already answered. But if you want to elaborate more, if I or if you miss anything, maybe I can add something there, as well, Mahmoud. Mm. Actually, selecting the team members is very important because mm. you know you'll be putting which uh, team member or. Uh, the skills and competences that will be required in a certain function, not only actually in the actually that's the whole organization, not only supply chain. By having this kind of skills and competence in the right location or department or whatever, it's not embedded by, by, by him. Let me put it in a different way. You will be having a person who is inspired to come to the job on a daily basis. Mm. He's just waiting to wake up in the morning, do whatever he likes to do, going to the gym, running, swimming, do whatever you'd like to do, then you'll be waiting the time to come to the job and start working with you. If you have that person in that position, believe me, you can't demand anything at any time. Okay. He'll be more than happy to deliver. I'm happy that you're sharing this secret <laughs> for everyone so that even the the senior team and, um, and mid-level management and supply chain, they get the message on how how to select the team and how to get them alerted without putting pressure. 
how to be deeply connected with them. And thank you so much for sharing this uh, details with us. Yeah, because there's something that maybe we can share at the same time, even for the team members. Mm. Going to a certain position or a job, don't look at that. Actually, I need to have this position just because of my career, because I need to jump here and there. Be in a, a position or a job that you like. You inspire to do that job. Because that actually you're spending most of your life in that in, in that period of time during in, in the office. And people who are working, they're spending in the job more time more than the time they're spending in the, in, in their homes. Sure. I know that actually the young generation now is not the same as us before. So. I totally agree. But still, even I know that they'd like to give more space to their social life. That's fine, that's okay. And actually their full rights. But whenever they are in the job itself, try to do something that inspiring you, something that you love to do. Because that's actually the time you spend of your life in the job. I'm using usually a very good example. For example, any sport, I don't like to specify any kind of sport, is it football, tennis, whatever. Just imagine that the football player, his job, it is hobby. Try to do the same. Just to make, to make it actually very short. Hmm. His job is his hobby as well. True. Try that's, to do the same. That's what uh, he or she loves to do. Exactly. So and, don't do and, anything that you don't his like. Or her career at the same time. Exactly. Hmm. So everything is aligned. Everything the is hobby aligned. and the... Exactly. So, so what you're saying that try to convert your job into uh, a hobby where you can deliver more and get inspired and you feel exactly, the yeah. fulfillment exactly. during uh, the job itself. Okay. But it's your life. It's, it's part of you, يعني, managing your life as well. True. So try to do something that you love. True. I agree. Now, speaking about the love, let's go to the main subject. <laughs> Moving from love to the, the fact-based uh, yeah. discussion. Now, you mentioned the vision, um, especially engaging the team on that. In this vision, definitely there is a certain delivery or KBIs. There is a vision for a short term or long term, short term like in the coming three months, in the coming six months or one year. And then strategically with your team, you set a vision for a longer term. I believe in your many, many, many roles in supply chain, you used to plan yeah. ahead even two, three years ahead. You have to do that. Uh, supply chain is one of the functions that they have a very long term horizon to look at to get ready and prepared for all the changes uh, around the globe. So now when you when you have this supply chain discussion uh, much longer term, how you make sure that you take the financial aspect into that long term uh, long term uh, vision? I, I, I have a confession to tell you that there is somehow a perception from a, especially for me that the, the engineer or supply chain resource, he wants to build the best factory ever. Uh, same for marketeer, not only for supply chain, to be fair. So for marketing team, they want to build the best campaign ever. There is a certain KPI to assess the return on investment. But when you go such deeper, you figure out that it doesn't have the proper value impact on the business or it can be managed through other way. So back to the question, how we ensure when you have your long term strategy within supply chain, the financial aspect has been taken into account. Mahmoud, if you ask this question 15 years ago, mm-hmm. you'll have an answer different than 10 years ago, different than five years ago, and now. Mm-hmm. Frankly speaking, we, we, we develop all this kind of learning and understanding in the hard way. Actually, we are in the job, we're trying to learn, and doing actually courses, whatever, just to understand. And I'm very happy to share all this kind of experience actually in this kind of capsule to the, to the team that will be listening to this kind of podcast. I agree. Engineers love their machines and their factories or actually their uh, uh, warehouses or the transportation or whatever they need to. I agree, fully, fully agree. But you need to, you need to connect the engineers, the supply chain with the reality in the company. Let me try to just to, to simplify things. In a company, whether it's actually your personal company or a small partnership or a shareholding company, or multinational or whatever. You need to de- deliver results and profitability to the owners of the company. This is the business. 
let's be very frank and uh, be, be very, very straight, right or wrong. You need to deliver profit to the shareholders. So you need to, and, and if you manage to get the supply chain team or any functions, marketers, uh, uh, sales, whatever, all functions in the organization to understand the connectivity with the financial targets and the long-term financial stability of the organization, I think you will be managing a lot of conflicts in the company automatically. So what you need to do, it, 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 it is very, and you need to approach it with a holistic approach between the operational targets of the supply chain and the long-term financial stability of, of, of the organization. And actually you need to be connected together. You cannot do one and leave the other. Hmm. To do this definitely, you need to develop a very comprehensive supply chain strategy. To do that strategy, it has to be complied even with the financial strategy of the organization. You cannot have your supply chain strategy building a Rolls Royce, for example, but the, the financial strategy is completely different. Hmm. So you need to understand how to de develop that strategy definitely with the organization, organization financial strategy as well. So first of all, you need to bring the two teams together and you need to build the strategy accordingly. Then you need to evaluate the total cost of, of, on, of, of ownership. Now, the product doesn't mean only the material cost. You need to understand for the supply chain team, the material cost, the transportation, the logistics, the manufacturing, the, even the, the elements of planning as well, when you need to produce, when you need to store, when you need to deliver to the market. If you understand the total cost of ownership, uh, the ownership of the total cost, that will be, at least will be breaking a lot of barriers for the supply chain in their minds, what they need to do with the product when they need to procure the material, when they need to store the material, when they need to produce, when they need to deliver. Mm. So actually, this is very important to understand the total cost of the supply chain, not only the material cost or actually different elements by elements in the supply chain. Then we need to go to the, uh, you need to conduct a regular uh, uh, risk assessment. Mm. Now, we, we just came out you know, three years ago with the global panda, uh, COVID pandemic and all of us, and that pandemic hit us with a surprise and without any learning, uh, and even before. You just and you write your own book with your own experience from the uh, COVID pandemic. True. And we got a lot of learnings as, as well. Now, the risk assessment has to, uh, 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 you need to assess the ge geopolitical situation risk as well as the time risk as well. Because with the time, sometimes the demand is going to change or the supply ha has a risk. And in the, for example, I'm just taking an example in the pandemic situation, the whole globe, transportation and logistics get, get impacted. The getting material from east to west or vice versa, that completely impacted. Even with the time, sometime with the, and the different time during the year or actually year after year or the, even different horizon or different uh, even season, the, 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 the different demand signal is completely, sometimes the, you, you know, the, the consumer behavior is completely different. Now we're talking here about the FMCG industry. I know that we can take a, a supply chain of different industries, whether it's FMCG, automotive, uh, you can pharmaceutical, uh, travel, hospitality, everybody has different, uh, di different uh, obligation and different requirements. With the risk assessment, you need to have an agile supply chain. You need to have a responsive supply chain that you shouldn't be taken with a surprise. This is the learning that we get after the pandemic. Mm. If you have, you plan all this risk well in advance, if you get disrupted, actually getting material from the east, how you can get it from the west. If you get actually something happen with this supplier, what about the alternative supplier? So maybe you need to create different suppliers. Or maybe you get your materials from different suppliers at the same time. Mm. So how you can mitigate this kind of risk? Why am I taking, getting this example? Because you need to just to, do, to, to create this kind of resp responsive plan for the risk that will be impacting the supply chain. Hmm. So while doing this, you, then you can mitigate all the financial am impact of the risk that could, uh, could hit the, the, the organization or could hit the business. Hmm. So definitely you need to continue reviewing the risk assessment of your supply chain okay. and to have it more agile and uh, responsiveness. Lately, we understand even the technology as well as the data anal and analytics, it's playing a big role in to have uh, uh, an informative supply chain decision. Mm. You have Excel sheets, you have different different uh, systems, you have whatever, but 
you know if the inter- in, in, in the uh, artificial intelligence can help you to bring all this kind of, uh, kind of data to be something that you can work it out it can visualize what's happening even uh, in the predictive uh, predictability even in the in the future even real time even the real time visibility real time visibility and this is a big problem between supply chain and finance <laughs> was in it could be in the same organization everybody using different tools when i say tools it could be uh, uh, end to end software or uh, excel sheets or whatever developed here and there this is very dangerous in the organization so the real time visibility and having a, a state of the art technology that can get magic all this kind of data and can give you the real real time visibility to build your decisions accordingly that will be very critical even for supply chain and the finance and the financial for the organization okay to add to all this definitely the collab- collaboration with the suppliers you need to have uh, a direct contact with the key suppliers you need to have this kind of partnership with the suppliers in the old school you just to get a place order with the supplier get the material and start pr- uh, producing but the learning that we get later on that the supplier themselves they have their own technology for their own material and they can help you with the respon- with different responsiveness and they can help you even in the in your new innovation or even the product design by the innovation that they, they can have in their own side if you have the early communication with the suppliers they actually they can even produce certain material for your new innovation as well mm. So this kind of actually collaboration with suppliers can mitigate a lot of financial risk as well as uh, they can save a lot of cost uh, to the organization as well. Mm. So take you the supplier as your partner, not only a supplier. Okay. Now, uh, so there are a few comments in what you said. One is that su- supply chain and finance, they need to come together. This is one of the points I noted that, and that's the title of the episode that how supply chain and finance have a certain synergy to deliver supply chain strategy and, that's, well, and at the same time deliver the financials uh, of the organization is that uh, it's the ultimate objective of any organization profit organization is to derive profit and growth for the organization uh, i used to get this question a lot from uh, early six years ago seven years ago from a junior supply chain team when they say why we're stick to the stocks where we see the demand signal why don't we have the freedom to have our safety stocks stocks in the pipeline raw and packaging material to be ready for any demand signal where we know for sure that there is a fluctuation in the demand signal you've mentioned covid as well where the shift in the consumer behavior uh, impacted the chain of the supply chain the logistic definitely uh, globally there was a, an impact on on that now the question is how do you ensure the the control and financial aspect and at the same time the agility and the responsiveness uh, of the products y- you answer part of this question when you said partner with your suppliers as well to have yeah. a very strong partnership with your suppliers but do you think uh, there is a way to deliver the the balance between both uh, having the financial control, uh, financial KPI in supply chain. We're going to discuss this later when it comes to the supply chain financial matrix. Yeah. What do you track with your team in terms of supply chain KPI, but it does have financial impact and the team, they need to be aware of that. So how do you drive the the financial control, stock management, production management, all the controls in the factory as well, which is a, a big area. And at the same time, you have the agility and responsiveness to the different uh, business signal uh, to the supply chain. Okay. Let me go back to the same point that I mentioned earlier, that in the company, in the organization, you need to to manage profit to the company, to the shareholders. Mm. That means you need to have a very controlled financial management. And you know, Mahmoud, actually, actually, I'm not saying something actually is coming from, uh, it's, it's a well known. Some companies, they are bank, go to bankruptcy because of the financial management. Mm. So that's, a, that's I say, very critical and it's very important for people in the organization to understand and to know. Yes, you need to have your material, you need to have a safety stock, you need to have the state of the art machines, 
But what is the impact in the company? What is the impact in the financial of the company? What's the impact of the cash cycle of the company? These are the critical metrics that you need to understand in the organization, in supply chain. I think if the supply chain got this early, in their early actually career, an early stage of their, of their career, and then said all these kind of aspects, the discussion with finance and whatever they need to do in that organization will be completely smooth. Hmm. But we got it actually very late. <laughs> That's that's the true essence of this podcast. So to give this capsule, I agree. Yeah, to the early enough uh, for everyone and their career. So at least they realize the fact early. You said the answer about the best machine ever. You said this question if you ask it 15 years ago versus five years ago versus now, it will be Definitely, completely yeah. different. Yeah. yeah. So l- let me just take it actually in, in a m- more different perspective. For example, you need to start communicating between the effective communication between the two functions between supply chain and finance. With that communication. Whatever supply chain would like to do, if the finance and understand that impact in the total financial of the company and the feedback to the supply chain, people will be realizing whatever they are requesting. So that's open communication between the functions. It is very important. They cannot operate in, in, in isolation. And let me just share, and during my experience, either managing supply chain in totality, the supply chain business part, the finance supply chain business partners actually I'm working with him like uh, uh, like my shadow. Okay. I cannot work without him and he need to get all the direction correctly otherwise before taking any supply chain decision. So communication is very important. I mentioned the data integration. Why I'm saying this, for example, in some of the companies organization systems, there's even certain time to get the data. So supply chain looking to the data in a different horizon and finance in a different horizon, actually the, 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 the numbers is not matching. Hmm. So they're building their, their, their decision and actions uh, in the wrong base. So that's why the communication, even in the time horizon, how they get this system talking together, or if the company have the uh, uh, luxury to, to, uh, to invest in the data, data uh, 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 analytics and actually having developed this kind of system for the real visibility of those data, that will be a big unlock between supply chain and finance. Mm. Then they need to balance between the short term and the long term. So for supply chain operation, it is a short term actions. Even it's actually, for example, machine uh, uh, that will be delivered next year, for example. That's a short term. But in finance, we're betting even a longer horizon. Mm. So you need to balance between the short term in supply chain and the long term in the financial uh, uh, stability of, of, of the organization. If that balance has been, it will be created between even the, the, the finance team or the supply chain team, they will be having this kind of common understanding. Then the decision will become even easier later on. And instead of actually pushing them for approvals, doing this, doing that, stopping this, why they're getting more socked, why they're getting, with the understanding and getting all these heads together, I think that will be, uh, it made a lot of time waste to to uh, to align between the team. Then there is some sometimes resistance to change, and that's actually in any and across the, the all functions in their organization. People sometimes resist to, to to change, either to the finance strategy or the supply chain strategy or marketing or sales whatever. So you need to involve the stakeholders in the process of the change management, and to get the buy-in from them and to get all this kind of the resist, resistant change to this kind of direction, if that been eliminated and built it early in the early stages, this will be unlock a lot of uh, time to the team, even just to really focus on the, um, in, in, in the real job. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so that an- analytics play a bigger role because when you said that supply chain sees one number and then finance sees a different number and then they start the debate on a different different challenge. Different ground, yeah. You see the graph of six and nine where I see it from my end a number and you see it from your end. the time when they'll be looking into the data. Exactly. In which system they'll be looking into exactly. that, in which a screen they'll be getting <laughs> the data from. Yeah. So and, uh, this is the reality. This is reality. I agree. This is reality, yeah. I agree. So the minute you align all the numbers in one in one platform or we all see the the same truth. Then we have a base to discuss to discuss, exactly. rather than wasting effort and debating the number where it's a completely different uh, point of view. Uh, so now, if I move to the, I move to the next section, in your monthly connect with your supply chain team, the wider audience, not only the senior team, 
the what kind of financial metrics or supply chain metrics that you look at uh, with your team uh, and how you go through it with the team to ensure that the wider audience of the team they will uh, inform it about their daily operation into the financials impact now for the supply chain metrics usually i i'm getting actually a quote from one of my line managers which actually and it act- a type of CEO of the organization that in supply chain, you have a book, you don't have a matrix. We have a lot of metrics. <laughs> so let us just focus on the financial metrics. Okay. Okay. That's all be helping supply chain to understand what they need to do, how they can tackle things with, with the finance team. For the supply, supply chain team, they need to understand the cost of goods sold. So you need to understand the cost of the gold from the, from the buying the material, having the material, producing the material, storing the material, transporting the material until you get it from materials to product to be sold in the market. I'm talking about the FMCG world. So understanding the total cost is much important because sometimes in supply chain, we need to admit that the team will be looking into different cost buckets, hmm. not the total cost. So understand the total of uh, the, the cost of goods sold from A to Z, that will be uh, one, and a very important mat- matrix that we need, we need to understand that we need to embed in our, in our operation. Then the gross margin, because actually the gross margin, it is the uh, difference between the revenue that you'll be getting from selling this product and the cost of goods sold. That revenue will be taken as a gross margin that will be financing all the operation in the company. So that will be defined by finance, what kind of gross margin that we need to operate. So understanding the gross margin, even in supply chain, that will be very important for them. I know there's a, a, a lot of metrics that you need to measure, but from a financial point of view and to understand what they need to do and to have even smoother relation and to get things done, they need to embed even the gross margin of the, of the product. Then in the inventory turnover, you cannot have block the company cash in a material sitting in the warehouse for a year. We cannot do this. Hmm. So we need to understand what is the cash that you're blocking in the inventory, how, and how many times you can circulate that cash in the, in, in the warehouse. Can you get that circulation once a year, twice a year, hmm. five times a year, six times a year, seven times a year? That's, that will be having a big impact in the whole operation. And this is actually what we need to clarify. Having materials in the warehouse, whether raw material or finished product, you're blocking cash of the company. I would love to hear this from all the supply chain companies. I think this is that start actually, this is the understanding that already start embedding in okay. everywhere. You are blocking cash of the company and blocking cash that could take the company in a different direction. True. So how many times you can circulate that inventory in the warehouse and generating more cash during the year? And that will be reflected in more revenue out of this material. I get a, a, a story from different parts of the world that one of the CEOs, he was visiting uh, or opening a new warehouse for his organization and people were very happy about the warehouse, opening a new warehouse. So after the opening and everything, you see the materials in the warehouse, said, okay, the next action, what you need to do, close down this warehouse. <laughs> it's a real story. Really? It's a real story. Because <laughs> he was worried about the inventory will be locked in that warehouse. So. This is very critical, actually, the inventory management. Then the cash to cash cycle time, and actually, I already explained that uh, the cycle time of the cash and the turnover of the cash cycle, that will be more tra- translated into, into more revenue in the company. And that's something that we need to understand as a financial matrix within, within supply chain. Uh, then the return on investment, as you said, for example, machines, new software, uh, something that we need to do in the warehouse. That's fine. We need to do this. Because there's, there's actually a very good embl- uh, an element that we need to understand. Some of the supplies, they're coming from different parts of the world. They're offering this kind of machines. It could be a very good solution in that country mm. or the supplier country because the wages and the uh, uh, salaries are extremely high. And that new technology could justify actually that spend. And the return on investment in that country could justify that machine. But in different parts of the world, that machine, the return of investment, if the strategy of finance will have ROI 
in the company, let's say by two years, for example, three years or five or whatever, but that investment will be coming in 10 years time that you're not complying with the financial strategy. Mm. So that's what you need. And so before you request that investment, you need to stop it. Don't even request it. Either software, machines, whatever, any kind of technology. Then we need to go to the transportation cost. You need to optimize the transportation and the logistics of your material. Because as much you can cut out of the transportation logistics, uh, uh, definitely you will be implementing, and you're going to impact uh, the, the, the environment and the sustainability with something that we need to do, but you'll be improving cost as well. Mm. So even the transportation and the layout of your sourcing map between getting materials and transferring materials to, to the end consumers, that's actually a very important element. Then the supplier performance. So even the suppliers, they are far away from you, they're next to you. What kind of development can you do with the suppliers? What kind of materials they need to deliver to you? What is the format to deliver the materials to your, to, to, to your warehouses? Maybe you, can, you need to have different management of the material where you can cut all these kind of steps in delivering the material to the, for example, to your manufacturing or from your warehouse, your warehouse to the consumer or the customers. By cutting all these kind of steps, you'll be saving cost as well. So even the supply performance need to be embedded in your matrix in the organization. Sometimes in supply chain operation, you will be not really focusing on those kind of metrics, but actually in the new world, the supply chain team, they need to be completely agile and they need to understand all this, all this kind of metrics. Uh, you said it all, yes, sir. So within the supply chain, if I'm managing one line, uh, in cost of goods sold. So I know this is this is my budget. This is my benchmark. Yeah. I should not go beyond. But what's the wider image of the of the total PN? I'll, I'll, I'll even add one point here, which is this is very critical for supply chain, but I believe the supply chain as a as a leader, a leader doesn't mean very high in hierarchy, wherever you are on the on the on the matrix. The whole chain, yeah. The whole chain. If you're aware that the business is growing as a sense of the direction, I mean sales. So you know exactly what will be the next. Remember when you said uh, setting your team alerted for the change? So setting your team alerted for the change, they can see the performance on a monthly basis. They can see the safety stocks movement. They can see the market share in the market, market share, even beyond the PNL. Some keep it related to the marketing team, for example. So they stay alerted and be ready mentally yeah. for the requests. And at the same time, the opposite, if the business is struggling, COVID, uh, logistics, whatever is the global pandemic. So they are in this zone. So it doesn't make sense someone come in the, when the business is struggling and uh, and propose a request for a high-tech machine that has a high speed to replenishment, for example, or uh, to production, for example. So this overall uh, understanding of the business direction, in addition to what exactly you mentioned, gross margin, COGS, uh, ROI, payback period of that machine, uh, that will drive the overall understanding in the supply chain community, and that will em- eliminate many of the decision at early stages. Early stages. And this is exactly what I'm trying to arrive to. Mm. Simply spending your energy and efforts in this kind of communication, which is actually very obvious from, from the beginning. Mm. You can cut all this kind of time, all the kind of the debate and discussion from the beginning. I do recall in the old days that we hope we have, we have a plan and we have a strategy that we need to drive it for the whole year. We have a target from January till December. But with the dynamics in that at the global level, that luggage is, is not there anymore because the dynamics is happening very uh, and faster than the, 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 the uh, than the old days. Every day you can uh, and you can wake up with the, with with, uh, with a new surprise happening actually around you. Then we, we start, maybe you need to start embedding the actually uh, a, a, a half year target. And sometimes maybe you have a quarterly target. Sometimes people, they start having even monthly plan, a weekly plan <laughs> and a daily plan. True. Maybe you cannot believe this, but this is exactly what's happening in the new world. Mm. That's why the real time visibility is helping to deliver this kind of short term planning as well. Because of the different va- variability around you. I do recall, for example, in our area in the uh, in, in the, in the Middle East, that with the you know the ge- geopolitical situation was impacting this region. But just imagine now the Russia and Ukraine uh, uh, conflict is impacting the material supply at a global level. 
during pandemic it was only logistics materials available but it was logistics between east and west now even the material ha- has an impact is that actually i'm going to back to, to, to this and the same point before your agility and responsive supply chain need to take care of all this kind of risk maybe you will not be going with this kind of uh, risk mitigation but keep it ready because once it's ready it will not take you with a surprise the financial impact if you have a ready plan will be much less than when you when you got it with, without any plan true and that will impact the company actually very badly true so having saying that i think uh, the time is flying uh, so back to the purpose let's connect to the first point of the of the podcast if if you have a team now joining the supply chain early in their career fresh out of the oven as they say out of the university joining the company now and you you said the answer that for some question said if you ask me this question 15 years ago it will be different than today even not uh, two three years ago what advice would you give to the young generation joining the supply chain industry as you speak now love your job hmm. inspired by doing that job and keep it actually in your mind and understand you're in in organization that need to deliver profit to shareholders hmm. that's me you need to understand the financial impact of all your decision action in the company i think this is actually in nutshell what i need to and to share with them but to do this there's a lot of aspects and a lot of things need to be done to achieve this kind of goal okay uh, i love that one of your advice is to pay attention to the financials which is the true essence of this podcast the other advice There is a, a big factory team uh, working under finance, uh, the controllership and the, and the factory team, supply chain, finance partners, CFOs even, parting the uh, supply chain uh, uh, lead of the organization. Uh, now, if you know that a new joiner as well in the finance industry, joining newly to the factory, fresh out of the oven as well, joining the factory today, what advice would you give this person as a finance person partnering your your team, supply chain team? Actually, it's going uh, vice versa. Uh, even for the financial people, they need to understand these supply chain aspects. Definitely being in the factory, in the operation, in the warehouse, seeing logistics, that could mitigate or they can unlock a different understanding and it can really help the financial team to support supply chain with their thinking as well. Hmm. It's not coming from actually one direction, actually both directions. You cannot have a financial and a finance team member sitting in the office and trying to manage whatever is coming to him without understanding the operation itself. So actually they need to learn, they need to educate themselves about the supply chain aspects, going to even the details of what, whatever it is actually in, in planning, in procurement, manufacturing and, and, and delivering as well. Okay. Yes, sir, it was uh, extremely pressure for me to have you here. With the message that you deliver and your passion for finance, I have to say I admire your passion for finance and the numbers. Uh, the minute we see leaders like you across the board paying full attention to the financial impact and have full understanding of the finance aspect, it does make the finance journey much easier. Easier, I have to admit. My pleasure, Mahmoud. I, uh, I I hope that I have delivered the message that will be very helpful to the to the team or the audience of this podcast. Uh, if that's happening, that will be my pleasure. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you, Asir. <laughs>